Hi, so Morris Ward, inventor of Starlight. He came up with Starlight in 1986 after being a hairdresser for something like 20 years and he took it to ICI and a manager tested it, passed it up to the bosses, the bosses said go away, don't ever bother us again and Morris dropped it in a toilet. <laughs> this is true. Then he spent a year trying to reformulate it because he couldn't get it exactly right. After that, he touted it around a bit and his big breakthrough came in 1990 when it was put in a UK television programme called Tomorrow's World. It was a BBC flagship of technology and it ran until 20, 2003. It appeared on there in 1999 when they coated an egg with starlight, subjected it to a blow torch for five minutes, cracked it open and it was uncooked. That was just a wonderful piece of marketing and people who saw that were astonished. And it actually led to the Ministry of Defence in the UK being interested in it in 1992, running tests out at Foulness, repeating those tests with the Yag laser in uh, 1994. And it was also tested by the Americans at White Sands and NASA got extremely interested in it. So this material invented by a hairdresser with astonishing properties, was on the verge of being a huge pro. What is Starlight? Well, Starlight was supposedly a mysterious mixture of 20 to 21 materials that had to be put together in a special sequence and it was applied as a paint. And when the paint dried, subjected to heat, it would carbonize and foam outwards. Now, carbon's a great heat shield and the foaming protects anything behind it and the heat is uh, deflected away by the carbon. Although it's supposed to be 20 to 21 mysterious chemicals, of course, we all know that many reproductions have been done using just four, including cornstarch and PVA glue. The only thing to get in the way of it was Morris Ward. Morris was something of an eclectic character, not averse to a bit of industrial espionage himself. He would send his children into hairdressers who would run into the back so that he could follow them and he could pick up trade secrets on how to make wigs and how to make hairdressing products and then promptly repeat them in his own salon. So, not a whiter than white character and plagued by the idea that industrial espionage was something that he should be aware of and he was utterly aware of it. Rumours have it that when he gave out Starlight for testing, he insisted on being in the room. If he um, somebody tested something, they had to wash their hands to make sure they hadn't scratched a bit off. He collected all the bits and pieces, sweeping the floor to pick up any pieces that might have dropped there, just so in case they reverse engineered it. And in his head, then the product was worth billions of dollars and presumably if it was turned into a product it was worth billions of dollars and what Morris wanted was that money up front. There have been quotes of him asking for 10 billion dollars, actually 10 billion pounds, 14 billion dollars. Upfront payment and 51% uh, ownership rights of any product that Starlight was going to lead to and of course this was relatively unacceptable to quite a lot of people and Starlight never made it into commercialization and Morris passed away in 2011. So although Starlight was a fantastic material, the only thing that really stopped it coming to fruition was Morris himself. Three years later, or two years later actually, in 2013, a Californian company called Thermashield acquired the formula, or so they say, from Morris's daughters and they began to do the egg cooking experiments on YouTube and you can see the 2013 and I think the last one was um, 2021 uh, and they're claiming they have the original Starlight and they themselves are now trying to commercialise it but as far as I'm aware they still haven't had investment in it so I don't know any more details on, on it apart from that that Thermashield LLC have it, they're in California they're still experimenting with it, they have a Twitter account and a YouTube account that you can have a look at what it is they're up to. Now, to my mind, the messages here in Starlight aren't so much to do with Starlight, I think they're more to do with the approach of Morris. For one thing, we have this idea that ideas are unique and can, can never be repeated, and, um, well, that's not true. As Morris showed one important thing, he showed that it could be done and he showed the result of doing it. And of course there are research companies all over the world who are interested in this sort of stuff and just knowing something can be done can be a huge impetus into the research of that thing. And now of course 
the market is absolutely flooded with the kind of paints and kind of coatings that Starlight represented and they're pretty impressive and the results look very much like Starlight. Of course Thermalite, who've spent money on Starlight for an undisclosed amount, say that this stuff is nowhere near as good as Starlight and that may or may not be true but the simple fact is the Starlight replication is already out there work has been done and turned into products by people so although starlight itself may be better it may come to ta to, um, to a product courtesy of Thermashield it's already too late it was a perfect time back in 1990 when there was no competition and this was an amazing result had Morris been able to do something with it then without a doubt he would have been the leader of the field but having lost all of that time now to other researchers and with the confused market of paints declaring this, that and the other and there being a lot of competition, Starlight in my mind certainly has lost its edge. If it can sell on the mystique and it does, is as good as the say it is, then maybe it will get a place in that market. But it won't dominate the market like it would have done. It's missed its chance. And that's the thing about inventions. When you invent something and show it, what you're doing is showing it can be done. Sometimes the details just aren't needed. You don't need the details because you can find them yourself through your own research. There's plenty of smart people out there in the world. The other lesson that I take from Morris is this over precaution. Now as I hinted at earlier in the video, it could be because Morris himself wasn't whiter than white that he suspected everybody was trying to steal his ideas because that's what he would have done. But worrying too much about this is one of those things that means that you will never get an invention into a product. An idea itself doesn't actually have any value. It only has value when it's turned into a product and sold. If you own a gold mine and the gold is not dug out of the ground, that gold has no value. It only has value until you dig it out of the ground and purify it and it becomes gold. When it's dirt, it's just a big pile of dirt. So mines are a fine example of this. They don't have any value until work is put in with, into them to turn them into products. It's the same thing with ideas. Until you put work into it to turn that into a product in and of itself, it doesn't have a, a value. It has a potential value, but not a real value. Now when you work at something to turn that into an actual product, of course, it's very rare for one person to do that, I would say, unheard of. Usually, you're working with a team of people and the contributions those people make in that team are of equal value to the contribution that the idea generator makes. It's a team of people that move things along and creates things. It's not really one individual. We just live in an individualistic society where we point at somebody and say, oh look, they invented such and such. And usually, of course, it's completely wrong, like Marconi and the radio, we all know it was Tesla. And usually we get it wrong, so much so there's actually a syndrome named after that. Anyway, Starlight is still alive and kicking. It's the machine of LLC. They're busily trying to get it out there, but they're now in a very competitive market. Anyway, I thought I'd do a quick video on what happened to Starlight. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.